There's a story in economics known as the tragedy of the commons. It goes something like this. There was once a group of farmers grazing their cows on common land. The land can comfortably support 12 cows, three for each farmer. One of the farmers thinks, if I add a fourth cow, I can have a bigger share of the spoils. So he adds a cow. The next farmer notices what the first farmer did. She thinks, hey, my cows are now producing less milk because there are more cows on the land. I better add another cow to compensate. Each of the farmers in turn goes through the same logic and adds a cow of their own. The reasoning remains the same. The cost of adding one more cow is borne by the whole group, but the benefit goes only to the owner. Even though the farmers know this isn't sustainable, they know they will lose out if they don't add more cows. Eventually, the land becomes so overused it can no longer support any cows, and everyone loses. The moral of this story, we're told, is that commons are a bad idea. Every resource should be held in private hands so that someone has a strong incentive to look after it. Wherever there is common property, there will always be selfish people who overuse that resource. But there's a problem. Some things can't be easily privatised. The air doesn't respect property boundaries, so the atmosphere becomes a dumping ground for our fossil fuel waste. The water flows where it will, carrying whatever plastic and chemical waste we fill it with. Infectious diseases don't care about our invisible lines. And even the economy as a whole is a shared resource that a few bad actors can ruin for everyone. So this is further verification of the theory, right? Anything that can't be privatised will inevitably be destroyed. But hold on, let's go back to the farmers and ask, why do they behave this way? Why do they need to get as much as they possibly can from the land? They have families and loved ones that they want to support. They need food, clothing, shelter and health care. But the big businesses they sell to are getting bigger and paying lower and lower prices. They have debts they need to service. Farmers are among the most indebted people to the banks. And they need insurance in case the unexpected happens. Below them, they have workers who are demanding higher pay because they have all these same pressures and more. And at the top of the heap, there's the government. They're democratic in theory, but somehow they always seem to be taking care of the ones who have the money to get their voices heard. The farmers know that if they don't get what they can for themselves, they run the risk of losing their house, their farm, they could lose everything. In a world of everyone for themselves, everyone has to screw over their fellow human beings in order to survive. And a society set up in such a way that people must compete in order to survive is exactly the society that causes us to mismanage our common resources. In other words, the tragedy of the commons is really the tragedy of capitalism. The destruction of our environment and the exploitation of each other is an inevitable consequence of the system which pits us all against each other in endless destructive competition. The only way to avoid this tragedy is to work together. That's why we need to restructure society along cooperative lines. We need to destroy the hierarchies that divide us from one another. The social hierarchies of race, sex, gender and sexuality the economic hierarchy of capitalism. We must remove the walls between peoples and the states and rulers that send their children to die. When people are divided, they will act solely in their own interest. But when we take care of one another, as a community, there's no longer any reason to feel alone. <laughs>